Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to replace a leaking air conditioning Schrader valve in your vehicle. This is a common area for the AC system to leak. If your vehicle leaks out enough refrigerant, the AC system will not work anymore or it'll work poorly. For this, I'm using the 2001 Toyota Tacoma as an example. I've already went through the leak inspection method. For this, I used a dye that was injected into the system. At night, using a UV light with special safety glasses, I was able to locate the leak, and this allowed me to determine what was required for the repair. For finding a leak, I will have a video for this, so be sure to check it out. As a safety precaution, I would highly recommend wearing safety glasses as refrigerant can cause damage to your eyes. For the replacement, I'll be using a specialty tool which allows for the valve to be replaced without having to evacuate the system of refrigerant, vacuuming the system down after, and finally adding new refrigerant. First was getting new Schrader valves. I found a kit online which comes with two different types of valves and new caps if they're missing. The caps are very important as they do keep any dirt or debris out of the ports. Here I'm using the Specialty Tool Master Kit which is used for replacing Schrader valves. I'll have a link to the Amazon link in the video description. It has various tips for the valve replacement. They're specific for each type of valve. Just to give you an example, the tip may or may not fit each valve. What we're looking for here is to have the valve lock into place on the center stem. It fits into a little o-ring so you can retrieve and install the valve. You'll need the appropriate wrenches for tightening and loosening some of the attachments. The tips attach to the main valve assembly. This is what keeps the pressure in. The knurled fitting is installed and tightened. All attachments have seals to ensure there is no leakage. The removal shaft slides in and out when the valve is open. There is another threaded knob. Once that tip makes contact and is locked to the valve, the knob gets threaded into place on the fitting backside. This keeps the shaft in place ensuring the valve is properly removed. Rotate the shaft counterclockwise to remove the valve. There's not much thread contact, so the valve only needs a few turns, which is fine for disconnection. Then remove a threaded knob and pull the shaft fully back. Once you pull back that shaft, close the fitting. This will keep the pressure in. Unscrew the shaft retainer. This will allow you to access the old Schrader valve. Remove the old Schrader valve. Push the new one into the tip then. Then reinstall the shaft and screw in the retainer. Once it's screwed in, open the valve. Push in the shaft until the Schrader valve makes contact with the port, screwed into place. Ensure it's tight. The Schrader valve will be disconnected from the tip once it's in place. Then pull the shaft out and disconnect the quick disconnect fitting at the bottom of the valve. Now is locating the high and low ports in the vehicle. This will vary depending on the vehicle. Typically they're in a easily accessible area for servicing. Make sure the area around the ports are clean so no contaminants get inside the refrigerant system. The caps are typically labeled with an L for low and an H for high. This is high and low pressure lines. The appropriate replacement shaft gets installed and attached to the valve. Also ensure you have the correct disconnect fittings. Blue is for the low pressure side and red is for the high pressure side. Snap the tool into place, give it a turn to make sure it's seated correctly. Push the shaft down in place and gently rotate it. You'll feel it when it locks into place with the Schrader valve. Keep it pushed down, then screw on the locking threaded knob. Turn the shaft counterclockwise to remove the Schrader valve. You'll need to guess the amount of rotations. Six full turns should be enough. Then remove the locking threaded knob, but do not remove the shaft completely just yet. The shaft will be under pressure and you should feel it push back. The Schrader valve should be locked into the tip. Rotate the quarter turn ball valve to the closed position. Unscrew the shaft retainer, then remove the shaft and Schrader valve while keeping the valve in place. And here you can see the old Schrader valve. Match up the old and new Schrader valves to ensure they are the same. Then insert it into the tip and put the shaft portion back into place on the tool, threading on that retainer. Open the valve. Make sure that locking threaded knob is as far back as it'll go. 
We won't need this for now. Push the shaft down and gently turn it, threading it into the charging port. Ensure it's snug. When that shaft is pushed out, you can push it back down and lock it into the valve ensuring it is in place. Then remove the tool using the quick disconnect. As for switching over the quick disconnects, use the appropriate wrenches to loosen and tighten the fittings from the main valve body. As mentioned earlier, blue is for the low pressure side and red is for the high pressure side. Here you can see the size comparisons between the high and low pressure fittings. Replace the low pressure cap if needed, mine was still in good condition so I reused it. The high pressure side should have a similar cap, it should be labeled with an H. Snap the tool into place, give it a turn to make sure it's seated correctly. Make sure the valve is open, push the shaft down, and rotate it until you can feel it lock into the Schrader valve. Thread on the thumb screw to keep it in place. Then loosen and remove the Schrader valve. Then remove the locking threaded knob, but do not remove the shaft completely just yet. Let the shaft fully push out. Close the quarter turn ball valve to keep the pressure in. Remove the shaft by the retainer, and as you can see, here is the old Schrader valve. Replace the valve with a new version and thread in the retainer. If one valve has failed, the other may not be far behind, so it's always a good idea to do both. Make sure that threaded knob is fully retracted on the shaft. Then open the ball valve. Push the shaft down and thread in the new Schrader valve. Make sure it's snug, don't over tighten it as it's a small component with rubber seals. Remove the tool and then reinstall the port cap. The system did have a leak on me so I purchased a can of appropriate refrigerant. This will vary based on your vehicle. There is typically an informational diagram on the engine bay outlining which refrigerant is required for your vehicle. With the vehicle running, turn on the fan and activate the AC. The temperature will need to be set to the coldest setting. Here I have an AC charging tool. This is equipped with a quick disconnect for the low pressure side, a gauge and a valve with a seal brake for the refrigerant can. This can is threaded onto the valve. Make sure the valve is in the open position so it doesn't pierce the can when it's being threaded on. Then connect the quick disconnect fittings on the low pressure side. Close the valve. This will push the pin into the can. As you can see, there is an extremely low pressure charge on the system. Slowly open the valve and monitor the gauge. If the pressure is very low in the system, the AC compressor will not be activated. As the pressure goes up, the AC pump will eventually kick on. You'll hear the clutch engage along with the engine idle speed change. This is normal. This may take a couple minutes. Shaking the can does help. You'll want the system to be charged in the blue area. Specific pressure ratings may vary between vehicles. Do not overcharge the system as this can cause damage to the pump, which is a costly replacement. Pressure should be red when the pump is running. The AC lines will typically get cold and sweat depending on the humidity. This is normal too. When done, close up the valve. Then remove the quick disconnect and reinstall the cap. After that, your air conditioning system should be functioning correctly and you're officially done. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.